Hey everybody, it's Razor from the Horror Syndicate, and today I'm going to do a little bit something different. It lingered on the something... Anyway, it's okay. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We are wrapping up a three-episode arc for our The Horror Syndicate Discourse uh, podcast show over there on Facebook Live. So, of course, we want you to subscribe to the channel here on uh, YouTube and check out uh, the Facebook page. Tuesdays, Thursdays, we do live shows. And this week, we're going to wrap up the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series with uh, the uh, Next Generation, the remake, the prequel to the remake, the prequel to the original film, Leatherface, <laughs> and then uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D. Uh, but today, I'm going to rank all eight movies and uh, tell you why I place them in each position. So, without further ado, we will rank number eight. It is Texas Chainsaw 3D from 2013. Oh, honestly, I don't know where to begin with this one. Um, I watched it way back when it came out in 2013. It was just kind of like a, eh, type of movie. Uh, Alexandra Daddario, if I pronounce that right, was in it, and she's the star, and she's probably the closest thing to an interesting character. The coolest part about this movie is they... Uh, flashback to the end of the original movie and Bill Mosley gets to play Drayton Sawyer aka the cook and that was pretty great other than that the movie's kind of a mess uh, of course the original movie takes place in 1974 I believe or 73 <clears throat> and uh, this one takes place 40 years later which would make Alexander Daddario's character Heather 40 and she's obviously not 40 so that's a big problem for me um, and plus they take away that feeling of isolation from the original movie because at the beginning of the movie you see the Sawyer's house and there's a bunch of people in there, including a woman with a child. Huh? It seemed like in the original movie there was just three of them. You know, Chop Top, well not Chop Top, he was off in Vietnam. Uh, but Nubbins, Leatherface, and uh, Drayton. But this movie would you to think that they have a whole clan of people ready to shoot. And the opening is a lot like The Devil's Rejects, which is a huge problem for me. The opening for, uh, of The Devil's Rejects was great. And this one kind of stole that. So, uh, <clears throat> I don't like this one very much. So with number seven, Leatherface from 2017. Uh, it's now, this is the second prequel they've tried to do for a Texas Chainsaw. The first prequel was for the remake from 2003. This one was for the original movie talk about i don't think these people understood leatherface i don't think they understood timeline and age and dates the beginning of the movie takes place in 55 and starts off with uh, sally and franklin's father yes that's him and uh he looks like he's a fresh 20 something year old and his girlfriend runs off and dies the problem with that is uh sally and franklin there's no way they could have been born at this point they were in their early 20s if anything not not 17 or 16. There's no way. Uh, so I do not approve of that. Jumps 10 years later, and Leatherface is in a like home for kids, troubled teens, troubled kids, whatever, and they break out, and there's a misdirection, so spoiler alert, that uh, this big, bulky guy is Leatherface. You think he's not saying much. He, he kind of reminds you of the man under the mask. Turns out, no, it's this little shrimp guy who's 5'11", which is taller than me, but still, 5'11". Gunnar Hansen, six foot four and over 300 pounds when he plays Leatherface. Granted, this movie's eight years before, but he's not going to grow five inches in, in, in eight years. No way. I hate it. I, I do not like this movie. The only thing that saves this movie is Steven Dorff. But, again, The Devil's Rejects comes to mind as he reminds me of Wydell from The Devil's Rejects. So, uh, I'm glad whoever owned, had the rights to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre do not ha does not have it anymore because they will not be making any more movies. This was a mess. Both of these movies, you could flip-flop either one. They're both the worst in the franchise. And this one, uh, The Next Generation, came out in 1994. Tons of trouble getting out about. I think it started before. I think it was actually released in 1997 at one point. I do remember seeing it on HBO when I was a kid. Matthew McConaughey, Renee Zellweger, both in it. Uh, Matthew McConaughey, uh, this is coming off of uh, Dazed and Confused, I do believe, maybe even A Time to Kill. He plays uh, Vilmer, and he's out of his mind, and it's amazing. I love it. It's a, not a very good movie overall. They had this occult, secret society type aspect to 
the series and it's it's not great but uh it's better than leatherface and the texas chainsaw 3d that's for sure uh it's worth a watch screen factory has it on blu-ray currently and it's, it's a nice addition so uh check it out now we've gotten to the remake okay the 2003 remake this was when i was still very green on remakes and i was like cool the texas chainsaw massacre one of the movies that i adore is getting a remake okay this was before the Halloween remake, A Nightmare on Elm Street, all those good ones. Well, Nightmare on Elm Street wasn't great. Uh, Halloween was okay. Friday the 13th was good. Dawn of the Dead was amazing. But uh, this one, I went in expecting some, like, I guess, rehashing for the original movie. Like the Bone Room. Uh, the Just all those iconic scenes you see in the original movie, and I didn't get that at all. I got something completely different. The Hitchhiker, Nubbins, was not in the movie. The family was completely different. Uh, so this is just a different take on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I, I still don't care for it. I, it's, it's not because of the things I expected anymore. It's just not that great. It's, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. I, I just don't care for it very much. Uh, I do see where they, they really could have grown from this movie. But spoiler alert again, they cut off Leatherface's arm at the end of the movie. And uh, it just... Not great, okay? And they kill off uh, one of the main characters. And at number four, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning from 2006. I do like this one. Uh, it hasn't held up as well over the years, but it was a little bit of a nice start. And after watching it the other night, I thought to myself, I'm like, wow, they could probably have made uh, some tweeners, some movies between the remake from 03 and this prequel, because it's a prequel. Shows how Leatherface became who he is and his first actual skin mask, because he's wearing this really cool-looking mask just to cover his deformity. Um, and I thought, well, they could make a couple more of these and, and maybe even make it just a trilogy. But, of course, they did not, and we ended up in 2013 getting Texas Chainsaw 3D, which really probably should have been a sequel to this series, not the last series, um, or the original series. Uh, this one's not bad. A couple guys going to Vietnam... Uh, they get stopped by uh, the sheriff, who is not a sheriff, we find out, Arlie Ermey. And it's it's a pretty cool movie, a lot of good moments. There's a dinner scene, finally, which they did not have in the uh, last remake. So it's not terrible, but it's not uh, not the greatest either. It's number four. It's midway through. Say it with me. The Saw is family. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, or Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, comes in at number three. So you can probably guess what's going to be two and what's going to be number one, but... I also think that's quite obvious anyway when you do a breakdown of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or ranking like this is. This one is bizarre <laughs> in itself. Uh, Ken Foray is in it, and he is fantastic. Uh, Viggo Mortensen, who was still up and coming before Lord of the Rings, this came out in 1990, was in it as well. And uh, it's good. I mean, it, it even has stretch. Uh, Caroline Williams, for a split second, she doesn't say a word. She takes a puff off of her cigarette and moves on, seems like she's searching for Leatherface or the family. I take this in an entirely different way. It's another branch of the Sawyer family, just as crazy, maybe further down the highway, maybe they catch the stragglers who get past uh, Drayton and, and Nubbins and, well, you know, you know the rest of the family. Anyway, that's, what, that's how I take it. I take this as a different Leatherface. They call him an angsty teen or rebellious teen in this one. And really, uh, I just it's a whole different feel. But it does feel like the original movie quite a bit. And there are some great characters in this movie. And most of it takes place outside. There's a great scene where Leatherface gets his Walkman thrown in the, the uh, stove and he makes the guy take it out. So Leatherface isn't the same Leatherface he is in the last two movies where he's very emotional and kind of like the, the beaten dog in a way uh, in, in 1 and 2. He's, he's actually a little bit tougher. That's why... You know, rebellious teen is fine, but I think he's much more than that in this movie. So, I liked the Leatherface from 1990. It's underrated, and you should check it out if you haven't. And Scream Factory, if you watch this, please put out a collector's edition for us. And at number two is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, of course. Why not? It's got Chop Top, it's got Leatherface, it's got Drayton back, it's got the most of the original crew back, uh, including Toby Hooper. Uh, Bill Mosley plays <laughs> Chop Top. Uh, and he steals the show, in my opinion. He's fantastic. He's hilarious. Uh, Leatherface and he, they high five. Get that bitch, Leatherface. Dog will hunt. He's got so many iconic lines in this movie. So does the cook. 
Uh, it, it's it's such a good movie, and it's a very good extension from the original movie, better than the Texas Chainsaw 3D movie. It's <clears throat> great characters added as, as well, like Lefty, who goes nuts on, when he buys his chainsaws. And of course, when he's trying to get to their lair, he's going nuts again. I think Lefty just fell off the reservation a long time ago. And then Stretch. Stretch is a great character, Caroline Williams. I love her. She's fantastic. She almost gets humped by a chainsaw. Uh, just... <laughs> It's terrible, but it's great uh, all at the same time. I believe this was the first one I saw. I'm not 100% sure. When I was younger, my mom did test me with movies, and this one had just hit VHS when I started watching horror movies. So uh, I love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 from 86. Don't forget the year. And uh, I believe if you haven't watched it, Scream Factory does have a special collector's edition out, and it's wonderful. Two discs, tons of features, and it looks great. Check it out. So... I guess that leaves the best, one of the greatest horror movies ever made, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I love it. There's so much to it that I, I can't explain in about a minute and a half or whatever I have for each of these uh, little videos, but it is a work of art. Uh, I'm, I've got my notes on my computer. Uh, it's based off of Ed Gein, the serial killer of Wisconsin in the 50s, slightly. But uh, think about all the iconic moments and characters. you got Nubbins, the hitchhiker. You've got Drayton Sawyer, the cook. You've got Leatherface. You've got Sally and Franklin and their friends. I mean, there's so much going on in this movie. And I love that each one of the friends gets killed off individually with different moments with Leatherface. One guy walks in, Leatherface, that, that whole reveal pan up. Bam, whack on the head. Oh, love it, love it, the whack on the head. And then uh, the girl runs, go, falls into the bone room, looks around, freak out runs out the door and Leatherface grabs her and her shoes fly off and uh, he takes her and throws her on the hook. No, you did not see the hook go into her back. And then uh, Sally's boyfriend, I can never remember their names, Jerry maybe, he gets whacked over the head after the reveal of the girl in the freezer. So, so great. There's a great argument between Franklin and Sally over the flashlight. Franklin gets it soon after. In the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, you see Franklin still holding the flashlight, which is still lit. Do they change the batteries? I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's such a great movie. The dinner scene is probably one of the most iconic scenes in the entire movie. When the cook comes home and, and they tie her to a chair, Sally, and she jumps out the window for the second time. Two different windows, two different heights. And then running down the, the driveway and Nubbins is just slicing her with a straight razor. He gets hit by a truck. Uh, Leatherface gets hit in the face with a wrench. Sally drives off with some guy in a truck and he dances the night away. Well, the morning, I guess. Such a great movie. I have so many copies. I have five copies. I just wanted to show off real fast. I've got these two that came out in 2003 before the uh, the remake. And then uh, I got this at some point. I think it was six. It's a steel book. Really nice. And then my wife bought me this one on Blu-ray when it first came out on Blu-ray. I believe this is from 2014. And then I bought this a couple years ago. Uh, had to. Got It has all the special features, four different commentaries. It's the best so far that has been released with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Thanks for watching the ranking. Uh, we're gonna do more rankings. We, I know Seth has a ranking of the Creature from the Black Lagoon movies from Universal Horror coming up. And check out thehorrorsyndicate.com for way more rankings, not to mention other articles of all kinds of different stuff. And Tuesdays and Thursdays, the Horror Syndicate Discourse, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Facebook Live. Subscribe today, now, please. <laughs> like. The video if you could if you like it if you don't then I guess hit the uh, thumbs down anyway we'll see you next time with more content thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit talking the Texas Chainsaw Massacre